Hello, my name is Yvonne, and I'm the owner of the Facebook group page, JK Lifestyle and Travel. Today, we're talking to Lee. She opened the Montclair Psychic School. Hi, Lee. Hi, my darling. How are you? Thank you for having me. Thank you for, for uh, dialing in. Thank you for agreeing to this interview. Um, Lee, I wanted to know... Um, when did you realize that you had the ability, the psychic ability? Um, I would say formally, probably about 15 years ago, you know, you know, throughout my life, I, I kind of was able to discern energy and spirit around myself or around people, but I never really did anything with it. And I only started to explore spirituality actually 15 years ago. And I started to explore it when things were going wrong in my life. I started to look at the law of attraction and that led me to mediumship. And then that led me to healing and that led me out of the legal field and into this business full time. Mm -hmm. What's it like to have this kind of ability? What's it like to look at someone and have an idea. Maybe they're saying one thing, but they mean another thing. We all, we all have that ability. Everybody is naturally psychic. You know, if you think about yourself, we all judge people, right? Yeah. We all get a feeling. We get a feeling, a sense or a feeling about someone. You could be at a party and you're having a great time. Someone will walk into the room and the atmosphere changes. Uh, we, we see people, we, we like them or we don't, and we sometimes cut can't put our finger on it. Uh, we, we have impressions or urges, this would be a good idea to do this. That's a psychic impression. Um, and then what happens is we go against our intuition and then it goes wrong. You're going to lose money, you're going to have your heart broken. How many times have us women, for example, gotten involved with guys and, you know, on paper they look really awesome and people might say, oh, this is a very nice guy. But there's something inside you that it feels off. We don't trust that. And then, you know, staying with them, getting married, God forbid, then we realize why we should have trusted our intuition. So we all have this. It's all completely natural within all of us. Some people just trust it. Some people don't. I would say if you really want to have a successful life, best to kind of get it developed so you can make the right decisions in the right time. So we all have it. You can all do it. It's no one special. Psychics, mediums are not anyone special. We all have this ability. You just tap into it. You're very sensitive to it and you developed it. Is that what it is? Yeah, you can learn to identify, to pay attention. We get, we are bombarded by hundreds of psychic impressions every single day. For the most part, if you're not aware of it, we ignore it, right? Uh, we ignore it. Our intuition is always correct. And then we don't trust our intuition for a variety of reasons. And then we start having this inner debate in our minds to convince us not to follow our intuition. So that's what the psychic development is about. It's about learning to trust your intuition. I've had situations like that where I had a, something told me to just avoid something or it made me aware of something, but I said, logically and in my mind, it can't be, it shouldn't be, this is the way that it is, but it winds up later. I wish I had to listen to what my intuition was telling me. Yeah, and it happens in everyday little things in our life. You could be driving along the highway and then something just says to you, Move into the other lane for no apparent reason. And you do. And then you realize, wow, well, maybe that's now, there was an accident. You, you needed to be in the other lane to clear a path, finding parking spots. I'm not going to find this fast. I know there's going to be a place right in front. You drive there, voila, there it is. So you can, you know, you can use your intuition in everyday little things. What made you start your school? My school came about actually quite accidentally. My teacher, my mediumship teacher was from Australia. Uh, after a weekend in class with her where my mediumship got opened up, she's actually set me up in a circle and said, you're gonna teach. 
within a week, I had no business teaching, but she seemed to see something. Uh, so I, I started to run a little spirit circle and the place that we were doing it at closed. I found my first space in Montclair in the basement of a store. And people just started asking like, oh, can you share this with us? What do you think about this? And then the next thing, oh, can you teach us to do this, that or the other? That's kind of how it started. And within a few months, it was like, oh my God. Uh, it seems this is a school now. It seems like it's a center. And that's literally how it grew. Wasn't thinking of, I was just doing it for enjoyment, was not thinking it would ever develop into something. I was a lawyer. Um, I had, I'd never lost any sleep wondering how psychics work, how they make money, anything like that. It purely just happened. I was looking at the reviews of your school and they're very high. You get, you get a very high rating. So people think very highly of your school, the people who have taken classes with you. Well, I, I think, you know, what sets me aside from a lot of other places is I've not been, like I said, you know, my, my background draws a certain kind of client. So I do have a lot of professional, um, highly educated people who come to me, particularly for the healing, you know, so in the, the legal profession, uh, the medical profession. I think my background kind of draws, is inclined to draw a bit of that, but I'm also from South Africa. So I have people, you know, from Africa, the islands who, who, who do work with me as well. Um, but it's not a woo-woo school. I'm not a woo-woo person. You see, I wasn't raised. I, I, I'm not the, uh, the average looking into a crystal ball kind of a person. So my classes are very matter of fact. I believe in education. So it's a very down to earth approach. I believe in relaying all information that students need in a very understandable, cohesive way. I believe in the empowerment of students. I don't believe in spinning things and making them too woo-woo that people think it's very special because we can all do all of this. All of us can do this. So I'm not inclined to make it sound more difficult or complicated than what things really are. It's all very simple. We can all develop and we can all learn this stuff. So that's my approach uh, to this business. I think the, the interesting aspect is, you know, it's just, well, I also speak to dead people. So we also do that kind of thing. So that's being a medium, right? That's right, yes. Okay. What other things do you teach? Okay, okay so what I teach is everything to do with your intuition and energy. Mediumship, psychic development, we teach oracle cards, we teach uh, tarot cards, Reiki healing, all forms of healing, trance healing, trance mediumship, meditation, hypnosis, anything that's geared towards empowerment, geared towards healing, and geared towards intuitive development. The intuition gets taught with everything because in your everyday life, you develop your intuition to have a successful life, to learn to trust your intuition. Reiki, all forms of energy healing are intuitive. So we need to develop intuition for that. So you would do psychic development to enhance your intuition. How would you do um, that? What's how that? Would you, how would you do that? Well, you learn, you learn it's, it's very practically oriented. You can't really learn it from books. You have to actually work with someone and be guided into how do you recognize your psychic impressions, how to relay the information, how to pay attention to what it is you receive in a cohesive way. So it's all stuff that can be developed, but it's stuff that you need to actually, you actually need to do it. One of the things that I wanted you to talk about, to give some information on, is chakras. Hmm. Could you explain exactly what they are? Yeah, so if you think of the, if you think of the physical body, you know, when the, the physical body dies, uh, the energy is left or the soul, it's energy. You can't destroy energy. So we are basically spiritual beings and we are energy. And within our energy field, we have an aura. And within the aura, we have spinning vortexes of energy. Um, and we call these chakras. 
So we are actually one mass of chakras. Spinning vortexes of energy. There's over 300 chakras over the physical body. But for the most part, when it comes to meditation, intuitive development, all that kind of thing, uh, we deal with the seven major chakras. And these are linked not only to the way that we go through life, but they are also linked to physical wellness, because wherever the chakra is, it will govern the organs of the body underneath that particular chakra. And they're also linked to our psychic gifts. So it's how we go through life. They affect that physical wellness and also your intuition as well are linked to the chakras. So it's all about energy. So that's what they are. Okay, where are the chakras located on the body? Those seven main ones. Yeah, so if we start at the bottom, um, the bottom one is called the root chakra. So if you think of the roots of a tree, root chakra keeps the tree in the ground. So that's all about grounding stability in life and that's located at the base of the spine actually at the perineum mm -hmm. given the color red the next one is the, the sacral chakra that's just beneath the belly button and that's given the color orange that is all about um, joy creativity joy and creativity and that is also about uh, your sexual connection, your personal, your personal power is the solar plexus chakra just beneath the rib cage, self-esteem, personal power. Your heart chakra is about love, relationships, mm -hmm. uh, connection to people. Your throat chakra is about communication, mm -hmm. speaking your truth in life. The third eye is over here in the middle of your forehead. That is about insight, intuition, being able to see the broader picture in life. And your crown chakra links directly to God. It's about enlightenment, the universal mind, cosmic consciousness. So those are the seven chakras that we deal with for the most part. And they kind of affect the way you go through life. So for example, if you... Uh, have an imbalance in your solar plexus chakra, which is all about personal power, self-esteem. You're going to have issues over there uh, that will affect you in different ways that will affect your self-esteem. So that's what healing is about, fixing that, um, helping people to step forward in their power. How would someone, say for instance, if someone was having a problem in their life, like say for instance, a person couldn't make a decision on where, what course of action they would want to take in something. One minute they think they want to do this, the next minute they think they want to do something else. Um, that would be the root chakra? No. Or the, the, that would be the no. chakra? No, your psychic centers are, there's several psychic gifts, they're seeing. Seeing. Mm -hmm. So that would be linked to your third eye. So inner seeing would be seeing movies, like movies, colors, symbols. Mm -hmm. So if you were to see a symbol for, yes, go ahead and make this decision. It might be a thumbs up symbol. It might be a sun that you might see. Um, something positive. If you are speaking in the language of symbols and you are clairvoyant, that's how you get your information. So that's how you would get it. Uh, if you are a feeler, 75% of people, their strongest psychic gift is clairsentience or feeling. So this is linked to your sacral and your solar plexus chakra. So this feeling, you're trying to make a decision. Well, what do you feel drawn to? It's about trusting which one you feel drawn to. Mm -hmm. What takes you away from your intuition is your past programming, stemming back from childhood. You might feel like, oh, yeah, it's a really great business proposition for me. I think I'll be very successful at it. So what takes us away from that? Your inner thoughts, right? Your left brain pattern of thinking where someone you might have been raised to say, well, women don't go into business. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You'll never be able to do that. Mm -hmm. That inner programming that runs through our mind will convince us, well, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I'm not equipped to do this. So you'll change your mind. You'll lose that opportunity. 
that's what takes us away from our ability to trust our intuition. So how do we fix that? That's for healing. Healing your past. Mm -hmm. Dropping your story. Becoming empowered and learning how to manifest your future. And trust your intuition. Is there such a thing as blocked chakras? I would call it, yeah, you can get blocked chakras, but you can also get, you know, chakras that have become affected. Uh, with what, what affects chakras? Well, firstly, it's low vibrational energy, a lack of energy. So when you're feeling ill, it can affect the vulnerability in your aura. It can affect the chakra system. Uh, what affects your thought forms, negative thought forms land within the aura. Anything that's of a negative vibration can stop the flow of energy and affect your chakras. That's why it's important to be working with the law of attraction, um, positive emotions, positive thoughts. You know, they've done, researchers have done a lot of research into quantum physics and they have proved that they are through quantum physics there are energy centers that vibrate over the body that happen to correspond to where the chakras are. But they've also taken a further finding that you can make yourself sick through negative thoughts and negative emotions. But by the same token, you can also heal yourself as well by changing that. So anything of that holds a negative vibration, an energetic vibration, affects your energy field and can affect your chakras. So disease basically starts initially uh, with some imprints in the aura. And when we don't take care of our energy body and it lands on the physical body, that then goes down to the physical body to the cellular level. It holds that organ. So if you think in terms of giving a quick crash course now, in terms of Chinese medicine, uh, anger is held in the liver. Mm -hmm. So if Throughout your life, if you haven't dealt with the anger or trauma surrounding anger, it lands on the physical body, you don't deal with it. it moves into the liver right down to cellular level. So when we do healing over there, yes, the liver needs to be healed. But more importantly, what's the cause of the disease in the liver? Anger. So that's what we need to do with the healing. So we can go a lot, you know, meditation goes a long way to bringing us calmness and peace. The, the universal healing light or God's light is always available to all of us to tap into and ask for healing. Mm -hmm. uh, get yourself some peace of mind, move into this place of peace, channel this healing light of God. Move it through your body, ask for healing, move it through your energy body. That's kind of how we do healing. Just as we're all naturally psychic, we're also all natural healers as well. We can all do it. We've probably been doing it for ourselves, but we're not aware of it. What does, um, you said something about the auras. Hmm. You know, sometimes um, I was reading somewhere where people can see that. Like if someone looks at you, they can see your aura. Is that true? Um, not too many people. Actually, very few people can see with their it's clairvoyance, so it's linked to your third eye. It's the ability to see. So there are some people who can actually see colors and energy with the eyeballs, but very few. Mm -hmm. A lot of us can kind of start to see the etheric aura. So if you look at someone's shoulder and you notice like a thin band of hazy, mm -hmm. haziness, that's aura. That's you seeing it with your, your, your eyeballs. But 98% of people can see the aura inside their mind. So it's called subject of clair, clair, clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. So it's all about when you develop your intuition and I want to see your aura, for example, I simply close my eyes and ask to see the aura. And then I will be given a visual inside my mind's eye and I'll be able to read it with that. So it's inner vision, inner seeing. But not all people are clairvoyant. Not all people can actually visualize things, in which case you can tap into your clairsentience. So where you might see, oh, I see a blockage over a throat chakra over there. If you're mm -hmm. clairsentient, you'll get it in the form of, I sense or I feel the throat chakra will be blocked. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on the psychic gift that you're working out of. It's really involved. 
Not really. We all work with this all the time. We all have these gifts. We just don't pay attention. And sometimes it seems like um, when I'm listening to you, it's not strictly one. It seems like it flows. It, it, you may have someone that have an ability being a medium. Then you have someone that may be able to use tarot cards. You have, um, they may be psychic in some way. It, it just all seems like it's a little bit of everything. It's but not it's all strict. connected. Yeah, it's, it's all not connected at the end of the day. It's all the same thing. Just yeah. different aspects. You know, what do you enjoy? What helps you to tap into your intuition? Some people don't use cards at all. Some people are drawn to cards. But cards are a wonderful uh, training tool for people as well. You know, so it's all linked. It's all just energy. Everything's linked. So you'll find healers eventually become psychics or mediums. The mediums are all going to go into uh psychic readings or even healing it's all just energy it's all connected and people who are successful business people a lot of the times they're highly psychic individuals they learn how to trust their intuition right they know how to read people they can surround themselves with people who would be very uh, complementary to their business maybe team players Mm -hmm. uh, they they know how to trust their intuition if they're presented with a business opportunity they don't have sometimes opportunities that come up in life. You need to make the decision now, right? You don't have if someone says, oh, I've got this great deal for you on the table. Um, so you can't go, well, you know, well, give me a week or two. I want to sleep on it. Let it marinate a little bit. Speak to my family. It's like, <laughs> no, no, here's the deal now. You're in or you're out. Mm -hmm. So a, a, a person who's in business, you know, works with that fashion will go, yeah, I'm in. I'm done. Let's go. Mm -hmm. So that hesitation is a lack of confidence. So you use your intuition in a lot of ways in your everyday life as well. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking of times when I was in a situation and I didn't pay attention. Or, and I know that it did affect me physically. I know I got, you know, you feel bad every time you go in the door to, to a job or a situation and um, your intuition, you know, but you say you find some way to justify it. You make, you make some type of way to be able to do what it is you feel you have to do. That's uh, right. So, yeah, we all do that. I have done enough of that in my life as well. Well, that's just about it that I could think to ask about chakras. All right, well. If there's anything that you'd like to um, tell us, anything else that you'd like to say about it that I've, I've, I'm sure I missed. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's all just, a, we're all energy beings. That's what it is. The spiritual journey, what's that about? It's mm -hmm. learning to heal. It's learning about going on the spiritual journey. It's all about a journey of self-discovery. Dropping your past. We all hold on to our past. The past is done. All our traumas. Can't change it. What you have control of in life is how much you're going to allow your past to affect you. I would say go on the spiritual journey. Learn about energy. Learn to meditate. Learn to work with the law of attraction to change your vibration. Tap into your intuition to help you in your everyday life. And feel deserving of manifesting the most awesome life for yourself. Don't place limits on yourself, right? You are entitled to be the best version of yourself, whatever it might be. I always say, dream big. All children should learn to dream big, learn to work with energy um, and manifest their lives and strive to be happy in all areas of your life. You know, And that's what you're developing your intuition and learning to work with the law of attraction will do for you. So it's all about empowerment, joy, happiness. That's what it's about. Okay, this is Lee. She started the Montclair Psychic School. What is the location of it? Uh, we are in Rutherford. Okay. But we are moving. Where are you moving to? Well, you know, I've 
put in an offer on an office. I don't want to put it out there yet because it still needs to be <laughs> brought in. So right now, you know, since COVID, we've been doing online classes since everything's been online since April because we had to shut down. So okay. right now everything's online, but the new office will be in the same area here, Clifton, Montclair, Rutherford area. That's where it's going to be. Well, when I post this, I'm going to post it with your website. I'm going to keep in touch with you so that when you do get an office, I'm going to update the posting with the office, the address of the office. But please tell me your, uh, what is your website? Um, the website is MontclairPsychicSchool.com. Mm -hmm. And then my personal website is the South African Medium .com. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lee. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me, Yvonne. I enjoyed meeting you and speaking with you. I enjoyed, I enjoyed you uh, taking the time to come and um, talk to us. It means a lot to me. You didn't have to do it, and um, but you did it, and I value it, and I appreciate it. You're welcome. Pass the knowledge along. This is stuff that, it's not secretive. Mm -hmm. This is stuff that should be shared. I wish they taught this stuff in schools, honestly. You know, that would really set the, the teenagers up for success in life, because... So much stress and everything going on and it doesn't need to be. So, you know, the more people who know about this kind of thing, who learn how to manifest, learn how to heal, trust the intuition, the better. That's what I say. Okay. Goodbye, Lee. Bye, my darling. Thank you. Thank you.